All right. Well, good morning again. My name is Rick. For those of you just joining us online, I'm one of the pastors here, and I am excited to be here on this wonderful Father's Day. So, just going to jump right in today because we are in week three of the series of, of What I Want. And, and if you're just listening or you're the first time you're seeing this message, you can go online and, and catch up and it might seem a little bit conceited. Who's this guy to tell us what he wants, right? It's not about me. It's about what God wants. But I'm hoping that in going through some of the things that, that I can talk about that I want, it's something that you may want and that we may want as a church together. So that's kind of where we're at with this. We've been looking at some of the things that are at the top of our list when we think about what we want for our lives, right? We've been looking at things like the first week, what did we talk about? You may remember to shout it out. Yeah, let's put you on the spot because I can't know either because I'm completely drawn a blank, right? No. <laughs> week one, we talked about wanting to have a significant life. A life that is meaningful, you know, we want to make an impact on our community, on our community, and our world, and our friends, and our families. Last week we talked about um, what the what we want is relationships that flourish, because it is all about building relationships with each other and with different people in our community, and and making strong relationships so that we can work together to further and build God's kingdom. But today I want to dig into something that may or may not be a little bit personal for you. I hope it is actually a little bit personal for you. I want to talk about what I want is a healthy mind, body, and soul. That's just pretty much everything, right? So before we jump into that, I want to remind you as we talk about these things, take some notes. This stuff may not just be for you today. It could be for your friends or family members, coworkers. Uh, maybe you're a leader in the community and you lead the whole community. No pressure, right? The, these things that I talk about may be for you or for someone in your family that uh, is just kind of off the beaten path a little bit. And we want to talk to them and share things about what it means to follow Christ. That's what this is so important that you do. And don't just take my word for it. Most of you know, I mean, I've been doing, well, I say I'm new, I guess I've been doing this for four or five years now, so hopefully I'm getting better, but I'm still learning, I'm still reading scripture, and I'm still studying, and I want to learn as much as I can and be become uh, more like Christ every day, and I expect for you guys to be doing the same thing. Don't just take my word for it. Dig into scripture and see what God has to say to you. That's so important. Just a few verses a day, you know, five verses a day. Just spend some time in prayer and meditation and learning. So, when it comes to when I, what I want with this healthy mind, body, and soul, I think about people I look at in the community, people who are wiser than me, people who have stronger character than I do, people who have a deeper, closer relationship with Christ than I do, and I think to myself, that's what I want. I want to be more like them, but really we want to be more like Christ, but we see this in our lives. We see people that have a healthy mind, body, and soul. So definitely, absolutely, that's what I want. I want to be more like them. We all know, do you, you all know people like that, right? That you look at, that you, you kind of look up to in your, in your lives that have these deep, meaningful relationships and have a healthy mind, body, and soul. So let me just ask you a, a few questions, right? Just right off, the bat, right off the bat, is anybody else, even in the slightest, when you're watching TV or, or flipping through channels or on the internet and, and you see that, that perfect thing, the infomercial that promises, just take this pill and everything will be good or eat this exotic fruit and you'll change your whole body. You'll feel energized. You'll, you, you'll lose that spare tire and reduce anxiety. Are any of you even the least bit tempted to think, what if? What if it works? What if there is that magic pill, right? Um, over the last 20 years, 25 years, I, I've, I've been duped a little bit. I bought some pills. I bought some uh, whatever, you know, them little exercise machines. Encyclopedias when we were young, I thought we would, an encyclopedia and a computer, I think I'm still paying for them suckers. But um, <laughs> it happens, right? But we, what, what would we do to have a healthy mind, body, and spirit? Because that's what we want even if we don't really want to put in any effort, right? We want all those things, but sometimes, you know, we don't put in the effort that we need to put in. And I, I, and I, I think we would all agree that Christian or, or not, not a Christian, we all would say we want a healthy mind, body, and spirit, don't we? Whether we're Christian or not, everybody wants to be healthy. Everybody wants to have a sound mind and spirit or soul. That's, so that's what I want. So I want to start right, right off the bat in the Bible, 
Because one day Jesus was put on the spot. These, these religious leaders, these religious lawyers, so to speak, who, who were trying to trip up Jesus, they asked him, of all the commandments, what is the most important one? And Jesus says this. He says, the most important commandment is this. The Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. That's simple, right? We are to love God with our mind. Not just part of our mind. We are to love God with everything we are. We're to love God with our body and our spirit and our soul. We are to love God with our entire being. What does that look like? How do we do that? Right? It's easy to read. It's easy to say. But, but how do you do it? How do we love God with everything we are? So I want to do a little self-evaluation. Ask yourself, how healthy is my mind? Think about that. How healthy is my mind? Maybe, maybe your mind won't turn off sometimes. Maybe your mind just kind of goes and goes and goes and won't allow you to sleep. Any of you guys have that problem? Anybody? Somebody? Right? You lay in bed and you just can't shut it off. Maybe your mind spins with, with uh, anxiety and negative thoughts and maybe lustful thoughts and maybe, you know, just the world intruding into your, your mind and you just can't shut it off. It happens to all of us, doesn't it? I think so. How healthy is your body? How healthy is your body? Maybe we, we've lost some motivation here. It can be tough to, to have a healthy body. Your weekly exercise maybe consists of walking to the fridge and counting those steps on your Fitbit and saying we're good, right? I wear this thing all the time, and I'm like just waiting for it to buzz and say 10,000, right? My idea of fitness usually comes to trying to fit this whole pizza in my mouth. That's my idea of fitness, right? (laughs) It has been for a long time. How healthy is your soul? How healthy is your soul? Is your soul lonely and empty? Is your soul contaminated with hate and greed and lust and depression and all of the things of this world? Maybe, maybe you have that nagging feeling that there's just got to be something more to life than this. How healthy is your soul? But the good news, the really good news is it's possible with God's help. It is so possible with God's help to have a healthier mind, body, and soul. And that can start right now, today, this very moment, if we choose it. Because all of this, everything God offers is a gift. And we just have to accept it. We have to accept it. So let's look at three practical ways that that we can love God with all of our mind, body, and soul. I mean, here's the first one. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Fix your thoughts on what is true. This comes right from the Bible. The Apostle Paul wrote, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. I don't think there's anything more mysterious in the world than our very own human mind. I mean, think about this. At this very moment, at this very moment, you're being impacted with 100 billion bits or million bits of information per second. All the stuff that's going on around us. But our senses, how amazing is our body and how God made us, our senses are filtering out 98% of the unneeded or unnecessary information. Maybe not unnecessary, but, but your brain is processing the other 2% of that which is 2 million bits of information. And it processes that so fast, and then all of a sudden, to your conscious awareness, five or six or five to nine pieces of the most relevant information come to your forefront, right? Think about that. 100 million bits of information per second. And we're, our mind is able to filter it all out, and we figure out what we need to, to pay attention to. Every situation is different what those relevant things are, but it's impossible to comprehend what's going on up here, right? And for most of you, you've been thinking about that for years about me, right? What's going on in his head, right? But it is impossible to figure these things out, and, but it is possible. It is very possible to allow God into our mind, to allow God to help us to, to change the way we think. Paul wrote this. 
Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Don't let this world dictate who you are. Let God change the way you think and how you react to the world, how you interact with the world. Everybody's going to have a negative, ungodly thought from time to time, but the people that are, are the most unhealthy in their minds are the ones that, that their thoughts linger, right? Their thoughts linger on things. It's the linger that lets those thoughts get deeper into your mind and into your heart and, and start to dictate who you are. Let me give you a few examples. Okay, first, guys, I've been going to the gym a lot lately, but, but the gym, the shorts are shorts and the, and the tops are tight, right? But, and when you see an attractive woman and, and, and you look at her, do you think, man, she's beautiful, but what if? If only, right? It's in those first two seconds. Your opportunity to linger or not happen in those first two seconds. The behaviors and the customs of this world tell you it's okay. You can admire, just don't touch, right? You can admire all you want. No, but I'm telling you it is not okay. In Matthew 28 or 5:28, Jesus tells us this. I say to you that, that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his mind. Even our thoughts can cause us to sin. That's for men and women, right? We can interchange the, the pronouns there or whatever that is. But for women, when you see a handsome man open the door for a lady or being very gentlemanly or, or the six-pack ab guys that are in all the commercials, right? Do, do, you, do you sit there and think, oh, wouldn't it be great if, what if, if only my husband would, you know, and, and if we take the time to linger there on that fantasy, right, again, your opportunity to linger or not linger happens in that first two seconds. The same thing for the women, right? The behaviors of this world tell us it's okay. Just look, but don't touch. You can admire, right? But no, it is not okay. Because that's when we start to put that stuff into our heart. And that's what, what you know, garbage in, garbage out kind of thing. And you ever heard that saying before? Or maybe for all of us, we allow ourselves to linger in the land of Ur. Everybody, have anybody been to the land of Ur? No? Never heard of this? If only I were wealthier. If only I were, were prettier, right? If only I were thinner. <laughs> For me, if only I were smarter, right? The land of Ur is a dangerous, negative place to linger. We don't want to do that. We've got to stay away from the land of Ur. And lots of us just aren't aware of the ways that we linger. We spend time lingering. So my first challenge to you guys, to all of us and all of you online, is this. It's time to think about what you think about. It's time to think about what you think about. Ask yourself, where have I been lingering longer than I should? Is it maybe lustful thought patterns? Is it, is it materialistic or jealous things or greed or anger or unforgiveness? Where am I lingering in my life? And in order to fix your thoughts on what's true, you've got to think about what you think about because that's what we want. We want to get to the truth. Then you can name those thought patterns. You can name them and do something about them through the recognition and prayer. We recognize where we're lingering. We recognize where we're, we're kind of straying off the beaten path or doing the wrong things, and we give that to God, and we pray about it. We, we may say something to God like, God, I recognize these lingering thoughts, and I know they are not from you. Move these thoughts from my mind and replace my thoughts with, with what you want me to desire. But replace my thoughts with, with your heart, your love, your grace. Because it's one thing to, to get rid of a bad habit, right? But, but nature, you know, hates a, a vacuum, and so does our mind. Because if we move something, we're going to put something right back in there. It's kind of like our calendar. Let's make space for me. Oh, no, there's a ball game. Let's make space for me. Oh, no, let's put something in there. That's the way we are, we kind of are wired. And for me, I battled a long time with, with, with thoughts of self-doubt and, and, and not knowing if I'm the right person for this or that or whether or not I'm good enough or, and my mind won't turn off sometimes and I battle this, this fear of failure. I mean, think about this, you know, not just this campus, but in, as a father, as a husband, as, as a brother and, and all of these things. Am I good enough to do these things? Am I good enough or, or 
am I really truly called to be your pastor? I mean, think about the pressure that is, that is on all of us, no matter what your job is, right? And I battle with that almost every day, thinking about it. It's this constant battle in my mind. But, but one of the ways that I've been able to battle this in my mind is that I replace, replace these thoughts with thoughts of affirmation. What do I mean by that? I remind myself of my true identity. My true identity is in Jesus Christ. He is my Lord, and He is my Savior. I am completely accepted. doesn't matter what you all think. And sorry, I hate to put that out there, right? But it doesn't matter. I am completely accepted. I am totally secure, and I am deeply significant in God's eyes. And so are all of you, right? Now, when I think these thoughts, it's not just I'm making this stuff up and trying to pump myself up and make me feel good, right? There are scriptures that back these things up. And now God's truth, I can linger on thoughts that say that, that I'm a disappointment, that I'm not good enough, but God says, you're the light of the world. God says, you are my workmanship. And God says, I call you my friend. How cool is that? God is our friend. I will finish the good work that I started in you, and I will never leave you alone. Those are some powerful things and powerful comments from God to lift us up and give us strength, right? To strengthen our, our spirit. And what I would ask for you to do is, is write your own, your own affirmations out. If you have doubts and fears and, and shortcomings that you need help with, well, write out these scriptures. Use these if you want. Write out a few verses and maybe put them on little sticky notes and put them on your mirror so that's what you're seeing every day. Not the commercials and the infomercials that saying you're not quite good enough, you need this. You're not quite good enough, you need this. All we need is God and Jesus in our lives, replace the lies with the truth. Like these, when you hear, I am invisible, replace it with God's truth. I have been established, anointed, and sealed by God. Or, or these, I have a few more. I'm going to read the lie, and I want you guys to read the truth. I am nothing special. I am God's workmanship. Exactly. And then the next one. I am not good enough. I have been chosen, and God desires me to bear fruit. I'll never accomplish anything worthwhile. That's the lie. I have a purpose. I might as well give up in defeat. I am victorious. I am stuck in this unhealthy place. I am set free. I cannot let go of my past. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. God has a plan for your lives. And it's not to wallow in this self-defeat or failure mode or anything else other than that your true identity is in Him. And this is a great way to think about what you think about. And then you give those negative thoughts to God and you will find little by little by little He will change your mind. Not just change it and make you forget about something. He will physically physiologically change your mind and you will become a different person. So my challenge to you is think about what you think about. Always. Remember we talked about a few months ago about this, the God filter, right? We want to filter everything through Jesus before it comes out of our mouth, you know? A lot of times we really need to do that, especially when I'm in an argument with Kathy, right? But now, how do we, how do we honor God with our body? The Bible gives us an idea about this, and, and, and therefore, this is what the Bible tells us. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. This, to me, has always been a, a, um, a battle for me with my physical fitness overall, you know, but, but I want to ask you, how, how, how is your body these days? Did you know, and it may be a shock for you, or, or some of you maybe not, it'll be like, duh, but did you know that our bodies are typically at their peak physical condition at about 18 years old, and then kind of downhill from there, right? <laughs> Just kind of rolls on downhill. You know, I look in the, at myself in the mirror, and I, and I see it, right? Gravity's taking over, all right? I, I noticed I was going to get a haircut because when I get a haircut, you can't see as many gray hairs on the side, right? And, and, and some of my hair is letting go. I think it's because I'm getting smarter because my forehead is getting bigger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah? 
we see it happening. So, so how do we honor God with, with this, right? I mean, oh my gosh. Well, we need to figure out a way to, to take care of our bodies for the long haul, right? I mean, eventually we're all going to break down and the end is coming for all of us, right? But, but in the meantime, we want to be as physically fit as possible. And over the last 25 years, I've gone through seasons where, where I eat really well. And, and you guys see me, you see me some, some seasons where I eat really, really badly, right? And I gain a bunch of weight or whatever. And, and I've had times where, where I eat a bunch of unhealthy stuff. And, and I used to drink a lot of unhealthy stuff for me. But, but I, I don't have the eating part down consistency or uh, consistently for the long haul just yet. For me, it, it's a problem with discipline. Discipline is, is not a discipline as you're getting in trouble, but just the mental fortitude to stick with it. So how's your discipline when it comes to eating well and exercising and staying healthy? Right? How's your discipline when it comes to that? And did you know that according to the last CDC report, I just Googled this, 73.6% of Americans are either overweight or obese. Basically, 74% of people are overweight or obese, and, and they predict by the year 2050 that one in three Americans will have some form of diabetes. They say that 80% of Americans don't get the recommended amount of uh, physical exercise in our lives. Do you know how much that is? Two and a half hours of moderate intensity exercise a week. What is moderate intensity? It's just increasing your heart rate above whatever it is it is when you're sitting on the couch, right? Getting your heart rate up, getting your respiration up, breathing heavy, you know, sweating, increasing your sweat equity is what they used to tell me, right? Most of us want a healthy body, but most of us aren't really willing to put in the work. We want that quick fix rather than do the daily disciplines of staying healthy and physically fit. There have been some interesting exercise programs over the years and that have promised healthy bodies. Things like, I don't know, jazzercise. And I know some of you have tried it. Uh, tai Bo. Remember Tai Bo, the guy out there doing all that? I love that one. Uh, oh, this, the, the vibrating belt thing? How many of you got that? Right? Ron, you got one of those, right? No. <laughs> all right. Uh, the, the thigh master? Anybody remember the thigh master? That, that leg? Thing? I think it was Suzanne Summers. I probably owe a royalty for saying that now. Or this shake weight thing. I have no idea what that's all about. But, uh, and then I've actually had this one, the ab roller. Have you guys, anybody seen this one? You can tell it worked really well on me, right? The ab roller. Now, there's nothing wrong with, with, with some of these things. I mean, it's, it's great. Some of the Tybo, Jazzercise, all that's all about is getting your heart rate up and exercising and, and, and sweating. But what is wrong with our thinking is believing the lie that, that it's my body and I can do whatever I want with it. You see, if you've chosen to follow Jesus, here's the truth. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Your body belongs to God. That's what it says. And, and so because of that, we need to know that our body is not our own. So how do we honor God with our bodies? Well, I'm just going to get super practical. I think we know this. I took a year, years of school, it seems like. It took me 18 years to graduate college. Just so you know, I started when I was in the military, taking class here, class there. So I should be really, really smart. But you know what I got out of my health classes was it's really, really simple, right? Uh, calories in versus calories out. It really is. You got to burn more calories than you eat. So the practicality of this is start with a short-term achievable goal something really easy, our tendency is to focus on the big, audacious, hairy goal, right? I want to run a marathon next month, or, or I want to lose 40 pounds in 40 days. And, and these are great goals. It's great to have these goals, but you got to have goals that are healthy. you got to have short-term goals that are achievable, right? Achievable, just like reading Scripture and just like praying, right? Pray five times a day. Pray when you get up, right? Real easy. Pray at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then pray before you go to bed. Read five scriptures a day. Start out slow. Start out easy. Same thing with diet and exercise. Make it a goal to walk or to run, or, or maybe it's just work out three or four times a week. And then when you do it, celebrate it. Go out and have a cheeseburger. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that, right? The second thing is this, is, is to use a plan. 
You want achievable goals, and then you want to use a, pay, a plan to help you get there. Uh, uh, I know a lot of people, Kathy and I did this several years ago. We were, we were going to go to uh, uh, Hawaii. We went on vacation. So for a few months before Hawaii, we, we bought this P90X thing. Have you guys heard of this? Oh, man, we busted. Oh, I actually went to Hawaii with you guys. But we, we were P90X, and it was crazy, we, this program. And then, then I know friends who've done uh, CrossFit and step aerobics and kickboxing and, and people who go out and bike and run. And, and the YMCA has several programs for different people at different ages. There's the Couch to 5K, the 10K. They have the, what is called, Silver Sneakers Exercise Program. For, for older adults, it's just about getting out there and taking a few steps. I love Fitbit because it reminds me to get up every so many minutes and, and go for a run or go for a walk. I, I, I do laps in here when I'm in here by myself. I don't do it when a lot of you are here because you make fun of me. But um, there, <laughs> there's all kinds of plans out there. You know, as, as a church, we're connected to this walking trail for a reason. I, I believe we're on this hill and, we're, and connected to the school for a reason. You know, I, I know there's some of you that like to walk. We could start a walking club here. Meet here early in the morning when it's cool and hop on the trail and, and walk all up and down Carl Junction. It's amazing. We could do, the, do these things. There's all kinds of plans out there. So find one and just do it, right? Don't, don't make excuses. Don't overthink it. Just do it. We should make that some kind of logo or something, shouldn't we? <laughs> Same thing with eating. Just find a plan. There's lots of diet plans out there. There's the Daniel plan. There's some book you can buy. There's the, the paleo diet that's, that's about eating mostly fish and vegetables and, and, and fruit. Um, for me, what, what Kathy and I have been doing is we, we pretty much eat whatever we want. We just don't eat too much of it, right? We reduce our, our intake of how much we eat. We, we kind of limit carbs. When, when she's looking, I, I don't as much. But uh, desserts, we limit our desserts, you know. We, we tr just try to watch what we eat. And then what I've done is find something that works for you. I started going to the gym and exercise and burning more calories than I eat. That's the goal. But the main thing is don't do what I do. Do what works for you. Because if you don't like this plan and it's just such this drudgery and, oh, gosh, you got to get a time to make the donuts. You guys remember that commercial? Guy get up, crack it on. I, if, it's, if it's something that's hard for you, you're not going to do it. You're not going to stick to it. Just like trying to learn to read Scripture. Don't say, you know what, I'm going to read the Bible in a week. No, you're not going to do that. <laughs> take your time. Take small bites. Take your time. And if you hate that plan, you're never going to stick with it. So find something that works for the long haul. And then just work that plan. Work it daily. Do what you got to do to maintain it. Because all of us, all of us want this quick fix, but it's not a quick fix thing. I've been thinking about me and, and Kathy and I, a year ago, we tried the keto diet, and that, that, that worked great. We lost some weight, but then as soon as you're not, you know, you stop eating or eat off of keto, you go right back up. Um, so now we're, we're, we're just watching what we eat and doing, um, what's it called? Noom, yeah, we're doing, I keep wanting to call it Zoom, been in too many Zoom meetings, but we're doing this Noom thing, and it's great, I'm not trying to advertise anything, don't go buy nothing if you don't want to buy it, but whatever, find something that works for you, and over two years, we, I, I've lost 32 pounds in the last two years, it's crazy, right, but it's just slow and steady, I didn't do it all in a week, you know, you just got to get it in there and do it, so let me just go here for a minute, because some of us believe that we begun, or began to believe the lie, that it's impossible for us to be physically fit or healthy. We begin to think that there's no more hope, there's no reason to try. And maybe you've just given up. And if you're there, I'm sorry. And it's a tough place to be. I've been there. I've been like, man, my back hurts, and I have these issues from Iraq and all that, and I can never get to where I want to be. But I want you to know you're just a few daily choices away from that, that wonderful, awesome feeling of being healthier it's just a choice and we got to unless you're physically actually impossible some physical disability that keeps you from walking or, or raising your heart rate setting in a chair i've been with dr petrie's classes and did chair aerobics i look silly but i mean it's it works right it, it's great you just got to get out there and do it and the final way to love god mind body spirit and i believe this and i saved it for last because i believe this is the most important one it's work on your soul Spend more time on your soul than anything else. What is good? What good is it for you to gain the whole world yet forfeit your soul? What good is it for us to do everything we can and gain the whole world, be all about the world and, and make all the money and have the great job and do all these things, but then we forfeit our soul? What is our soul worth? It's worth more than anything in this world. It's the only thing or one of the things that God has given us right, that, that 
makes us who we are. It's not our body. It's not our outward appearance. It's not these things. It's the soul. It's the heart of us that makes us who we are. There's a, a, a great theologian. He says, this is what your soul is. What is running your life at any given moment is your soul. Not your external circumstances, not your thoughts, not your intentions, not even your feelings, but your soul. That's Dallas Willard said that. Your soul is the operating system of your life, the biggest part of you. Kind of like an iceberg, right? We got a really pretty blue iceberg there, but it's the 90% that's underground or under the water. You know, the 10% that people focus on is what people see, but it's the 90% under the water that, that controls everything. How's your soul? How's your soul doing? Are you living and experiencing love? Do you experience joy in your life? Do you feel as though you're living with purpose? The writer we talked about last week, John Orberg, he says, if your soul is healthy, no external circumstance can destroy your life. He also says, if your soul is unhealthy, no external circumstance can redeem your life. It's the 90% that makes the difference. The 90%. Because I've stood by so many gravesides now, and I know I'm a new pastor and all that, but I've done a lot of funerals. I've sat at several hospital beds right beside people. I've been with people who, who were passing away in that moment, and it only takes a few, few minutes of interacting with someone to, whether, to know whether or not they have prepared their soul for that moment. The writer of Hebrews said this, We have this hope as an anchor for our soul firm and secure. The hope he's talking about is Jesus Christ, the assurance of heaven, of beyond, that we will be with Christ, be with God someday. And your faith, your soul can become an anchor that holds you secure because when life throws at you cancer, when life throws at you Alzheimer's, when, when life throws at you sick parents and, and, and dying brothers and sisters and family members and financial losses and job losses and, and career changes, when, when life throws a pandemic at the whole world, it is that thing that you hold on to. The work you've done on your soul will make all the difference. That's why this one's last but not least. This is the most important thing we can work on. There's no more powerful way of establishing this life-altering, life-giving anchor than by learning and practicing the things that will help us walk with God. There's a book by Adam Hamilton called The Walk, Five Essential Practices of the Christian Faith. And it's a great place to start. We're going to be launching a campus-wide book study of this really pretty soon. I'm, I'm actually teaching the first class right now, teaching people who are going to facilitate these classes for all of us. So when someone calls, please say yes to be in one of those groups because this is so important. So stay tuned for more about that. This book will teach us to be able to walk closer with God through spiritual practices of worship and prayer and study and serving and giving and sharing. Yes, sharing. We are called to share our faith with other people. We are to go into this world and make disciples. And I look forward of times during the day when I can be still and know that God is God. To pray, to worship with all of you. To worship in the car when I'm listening to, to Caleb or whatever. To be silent, to pray, to study. Because all of these things are soul shaping for me. Because that's the most important part of me, right? That's the most important part of you. It prepares my soul so that I can battle things like negativity and anger and impatience and lust. All the things that the world throws at us every single day. You want a healthy soul? Then intentionally, deliberately commit to finding that quiet time. To spend time talking to God. To spend time in prayer and meditation and reading scripture. Because that's soul, soul building, soul changing, mind changing, spirit changing. You throw in the adjective, right? That's where we meet God. That's where we become closer to God. I want to end by this. I know I'm, I've been doing really good getting off early. Not today, okay? So here we go. I've got one more story for you. There's a man who, um, back in the, what was the 1800s, Horatio Spafford. Some of you may have heard of him, maybe not. But uh, he was this lawyer and deeply committed Christian. He was kind of a, lots of money, a rich guy, and he had invested heavily in uh, the Chicago real estate. 
and, and all of that. Well, I don't know if you know your history, but in 1871, there's something called the Great Fire, the Chicago Fire. Burnt down almost everything, right? Almost everything. And this man lost almost everything. All of his, his real estate was gone, almost all of his money. So around 1873, he packs his wife and his four daughters up on a ship and send them back to England. And he's going to stay there in Chicago and he's going to you know, try to reestablish something, get some money, and then go back where, go with his family, go back to England. You know, he lost everything in America and Chicago. And unfortunately, as his wife and his daughters are on the ship on the way to England, they struck, struck another ship and, and that, their ship sank. Almost everyone drowned. Spafford got a telegram a few weeks later, and all it said was, saved alone. Saved alone. His four, four daughters had died. They drowned in that accident. So soon after that, he boards a ship, and he's going back to England. He's got to be with his wife, right? He's wanted to, to be with her and, and console her and, and be with her. And, and, and on his way there, they cross over the exact spot where his wife's ship had sunk and he lost his daughter. And while he's there, he penned the words to a song. And if you grew up in church, you, you probably heard this song. If, if you haven't grown up in church, you, you maybe you probably heard this song at a funeral. But because you're here today, you heard it today. And the lyrics go like this. I'm not singing it though. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. That's what I want. That's what I want you to know. I, that, I want you to know that whatever life throws your way, whatever life throws my way, that I have an anchor that holds secure to Jesus that there is nothing in this world that can separate me from the love of Christ. How about you? What do you want? Is it well with your soul? The work you do on your soul will make all the difference. Whatever life throws at you, your anchor will hold firm and secure. No matter what. That's what I want for myself. That's what I want for you. And that's what I want for our church. I want our church to be a place where people can come and find that anchor. Because without it, we're lost. Without that anchor and the secureness and the, and the assuredness of, of Jesus Christ, our world is lost. And that's what I want our church to be. I want our church to be a place where people can, can come and find Jesus where people can come and find you, the light of Christ in this world. And for today, that's the good news. May you all continue to lead people to an act of faith in Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. God, I just want to come to you this morning, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to, to be a part of your church to be a part of a community that loves each other and wants nothing but the best for each other. But God, I don't know what's going on in everybody's lives. I don't know what's going on <laughs> half the time in my own life. But God, help us to be the light in this community. For those online and everybody in these seats here this morning, I pray that you would open their hearts and minds and help them know that they can hold on to you. Help them to see the opportunities to have a healthy mind, body, and spirit and use us to be the difference in this community. Father, I ask and I pray this all in your son's most holy name. Amen.